Welcome back to another Cornerstone Connection lesson review. I hope we all enjoyed our week. My week was lovely and I hope yours was too. We're at lesson number 8, Willing and Able. But before we begin, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Compassion Father Lord, thank you for giving us an opportunity to go through another lesson Lord. Lord, may viewers learn something from this presentation and use it in their everyday lives. In your most precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. And the key text this week comes to us from Mark 1 verses 41 and 42 and it says, Jesus was indignant. He reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. And in the book, Desire of Ages, page 266, it says, In some instances of healing, Jesus did not at once grant the blessing sought, but in the case of leprosy, no sooner was the appeal made than it was granted. When we pray for earthly blessings, the answer to our prayers may be delayed, or God may give us something other than we ask, but not so when we ask for deliverance from sin. It is his will to cleanse us from sin, to make us his children, and to enable us to live a holy life. This week's lesson focuses on the stunning event that led to a leper coming to Christ for healing. The dreadful disease was common in New Testament times, and anyone who contracted the infectious skin disease was considered dead and isolated from the community. If being excommunicated did not imprint hopelessness on the victim's mind, the foul disease itself would be a continual reminder of imminent death. Moreover, leprosy was seen as a judgment of God. No disease depicted sins work like leprosy on a human being. In this story, the dying man dares to enter society because he hears that Christ is coming close and has never turned anyone away. His appeal and Christ's response are the central message of this story. God is willing and able to save. In the Desire of Ages, Ellen White observes, When we pray for earthly blessings, the answer to our prayer may be delayed. Our God may give us something other than we ask, but not so when we ask for deliverance from sin. It is His will to cleanse us from sin, to make us His children, and to enable us to live a holy life. The words of Christ, I am willing, and the touch of His hand declare what God wants more than anything else, to save His children. Throughout this lesson, there are several angles to appeal to the young person to respond to God's gift of salvation. One way is to approach from the viewpoint of the leper, one who seeks and acts. Another approach is from the viewpoint of God, who never turns away an honest seeker. And finally, you might consider stepping back and seeing the larger picture through the Old Testament ritual for the cleansing of the leper. Now let's dive right into the lesson. Now there is no other disease in scripture that portrays the work of sin like leprosy. In fact, the term walking death, you know, walking dead captures the most common perception of the disease. When people were diagnosed with leprosy, they were virtually excommunicated from society and even in some cases their names were taken off the public records of living citizens for it was only a matter of time before they died. But some may not know that the leprosy attacks the central nervous system before it even affects the skin. Now in this story, Jesus asked this man who had been healed to, you know, go and show himself to the priest and offer the sacrifices Moses commanded. Why and what is this ceremony all about? Now, the ceremony is the ritual of cleansing and the law of the leper. 
Now, there are several reasons to make a visit to the priest, their first action as healed individuals. First of all, for leopards, leopards to be recommunicated back into, back into society, the priest had to examine them. I know, say you are really clean, pronounce them clean. But there is more to the command Jesus made than just getting another paperwork fixed up. The ceremony of cleansing for the leper had a deep, enduring spiritual experience embedded in that ritual. Now, when we look in Leviticus 14 verses 2 to 7, it describes the ceremony. The ritual is described. Now, the bird that is sacrificed is clearly Christ. And the live bird that is set free over the open field is unmistakably any sinner who receives the mercy of God. Now close your eyes and imagine this scene. A leper comes to the priest and the priest must perform this ceremony outside the city. Number question, where was Christ crucified? Outside the city. Then the leper watches as two live birds are brought out and one is killed over running water or as the Hebrew put it, the living water. Now, the blood of the bird is mixed with this living water and gathered in an earthen vessel. Now, the one that has been healed watches intently the dead bird and the bowl of blood and water. Now, what could such a person be thinking? Why blood? Why a bird, a living creature? What does this mean? Now the meaning is made clear when the one heel watches as the live bird is dipped into the blood and water and set free over the open field. Now picture this man standing there gazing in gazing into the sky as the live bird you know flaps its wing and the blood and water spray off as the bird soars freely. If leprosy portrays sin then going to experience this ritual is the most important ritual of all because it typi typifies your redemption, our redemption. And it is not lost on anyone that this service is about the Savior and the sinner. No wonder Jesus wanted them to see the priest because he knew that if they were going to go through this ritual, the significance of their salvation would be deeply embedded in their hearts and their minds. So Keith here, this week I only have two questions for you. The first one, how is the disease of leprosy likened to sin? How is leprosy like sin? So leprosy is a life-threatening infection that is mentioned in the Bible over 45 times. Now leprosy was used as a very powerful illustration of the devastating power of sin in our lives. Now sin, it numbs our condition. Now leprosy causes damage to the sensory nerves making the skin numb and as we, as we continue to sin, we become more callous and hardened to its effects on our lives. Now, sin leads to death, and as leprosy progresses, the lack of sensation leads to the fatal tissue and limb damage. Likewise, the sin causes people to make bad decisions that often leads to disaster. And we can't hide sin. Just like people, people with leprosy can't hide their disease. Likewise, the actions of people trapped in sin eventually becomes obvious to those around them. And the last one, sin produces outcasts. Now, the lepers, as we read before, were driven from their homes. They were excommunicated from society and they had to live outside the city. Like lepers, afflictions like drug abuse, alcoholism can turn us into the dregs of society. And for the final question, the leper makes an interesting appeal by saying, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Is there any question from the leper's perspective as to whether Jesus is able to heal him or not? What is the primary issue? Why do you think someone with leprosy would think this way? 
wow <laughs> that is a very packed question but i try my best to answer it now news of jesus's healing power has reached the man who lived outside the cities and since the lepers were outcasts in jesus's day the diseased man acts with audacity when it comes for healing at least in the view of his culture yet the leper displays faith not arrogance when he kneels before christ now convinced of the savior's power the man knows that jesus can make him clean if you know the lord is willing to exercise his healing touch the man is not only asking for relief from his skin condition but to be made clean now this would certainly include being physically healed but also living and worshiping with others now we don't have such strong restrictions regarding worship yet we still sometimes look for an excuse to skip church but of course you know going to church with a highly contagious disease like corona isn't a good idea but if our priority was to worship God with other believers, the more minor inconveniences wouldn't keep us home. Well guys, we have reached the end of another lesson with you. But before we leave, I'd like to leave you with a thought. Sometimes the stories of the lives of people, such as the leper, can seem unreal. But the event was real and the experience is real today. By the thousands, people will come to Christ and ask for a new life. Some will doubt and think, this is too good to be true, but will ask anyway. Just as the leper did long ago, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Whatever gets in the way of you asking God to save you needs to be put away, because God's voice does not give that message. The overwhelming, undeniable truth is that God is willing and more than able to cover you and restore your life completely. He is willing to do this as often as you ask. Amen, amen, Darren. God is willing to restore our lives. And that brings us to the end of our lesson review. But before we go, let us just pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for everything that you have done and will be doing, Lord Jesus. Thank you for telling these lessons, Lord Jesus, giving us the time out to explain these lessons to the viewers, Lord Jesus. And I hope that they gain something from it, Lord Jesus, that they will go out and apply it to their lives to look for you, for healing, Lord Jesus, for guidance, for protection, for every little thing in their lives, even if it seems minor to them. God is and protect us in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much guys for joining us this week. Join us next week as we look at lesson number nine. Not love at first sight. Have a happy Sabbath. Bye guys. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and, and subscribe. And please Hit the notification bell so that you can be notified of our next video.